I like to speak today about a topic that's a little bit painful of what has been happening in the last few days in New York with the mayor. You all heard about this that there was a uh, Levaya in Williamsburg, and the mayor, Mayor de Blasio, decided to uh, come in and break apart that Levaya. And afterwards, he wrote a tweet. And in the tweet, he singled out the Jewish community. Seems like the Jewish community are not compliant with the law. They are not, uh, co com they're not committed to social distancing and so on. Since in that Levaya in Williamsburg, that's what it was. It was a few hundred people there. And they were not apart from each other. And clearly, they were not doing the, clear, the, the right thing. But that's, uh, that's something that they can uh, say otherwise because they feel, that's, that's how it sounds like, that things like that were uh, planned out beforehand with the police department. But whatever it is, whether it was or it wasn't, I like to speak about few points that I don't hear so much or at all that are spoken in the Jewish world. In other words... If you hear, there's, there's been over here a back and forth. First, the mayor came out saying that it's unacceptable and arrests will be made next time and summons were given at that event. And you heard an outcry of the Jewish community that he singled out the Jewish community. Yeah, you don't do such a thing. That's definitely wrong because in New York you have a million point one Jewish people. And in that funeral, there was a few hundred people. Now, those few hundred people were doing something wrong. But when they do something wrong, and most of them were not even uh, led by rabbis or elderly. They were most uh, young people. Those that were doing something wrong are not a reflection of the entire Jewish community in New York that is very compliant with the, with the rule, with the law, and they don't break the law in any way. New York at all, if you take a look, New York uh, City has 8.5 million people. Now, few hundred people that break the law in a way that, again, maybe they can say that they did it with compliance with the, with the New York uh, Police Department, yes or no. But whatever it is, when he, when he singled out, it definitely was something that should not be done, especially in a sensitive time like we live, that this year we were experiencing over and over again attack on the Jewish people and the media, and especially a mayor, that's a figure that should be very careful at the, at the, at the language he speaks. Such a person definitely should be very careful, and any uh, word that he might use might spark another fire. Now, that, although that is true, and I'm saying that straight out, but let's see what is, what, what's wrong with the people that they feel that they can go ahead and make such uh, large gathering at a place that is clearly danger. We are experiencing every single day, Levayot, by, every week by the hundreds of the best of the Jewish people. We're talking about throughout every uh, community, throughout every spectrum, any, even every age we already seen uh, from young to old. We're seeing rabbis that are being, uh, getting, getting uh, infected and passing out and passing away. So what, what, how could you make such a thing? Even if you would say that afterwards you'll hear an outcry from so many people like the city council and community leaders all the way up to the Fox News and Ben Shapiro and whatever you want, all that actually just puts it on the headline and puts the Jewish community on the headline in a very negative way. Now, although they would say that the, the mayor is wrong, he's the worst mayor that we, that we, we ever had, and he's a, he's, he, the, the way he speaks sparks anti-Semitism, and, and, and they all uh, cry and scream out that he was wrong, 
It could be that they should do that, but all it does, if you really think about it, is put this levaya, this gathering on the headline of every national news, and it just shows people, Jewish people are violating the law. And a goy does not know the difference between those few hundred people that were there and the entire Jewish uh, community. They, do, they don't make this differentiation. They don't know there's a difference. They don't think about it. They see it. And, and if, you, if you just want to know what a guy in the street thinks, you can go on, uh, on media comments on, and see that almost the entire goyim would not feel the way the, the, the news are saying or passing it through like uh, the, the Jews are a, a community that's law abiding, abounding, and they're not. You see that they blast the Jews, that they're not compliant with the law, and it's very, very, comes out, puts us in a very, very bad light. So this that it goes to uh, be blasted in national news, it doesn't come out to be a good thing for us. It comes out to be a very bad thing for us. And afterwards, we cry out, anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism. But then when you have such a gathering, I just can't understand how, even if you would say that they, they made plans with the police department, how it should be done, but they clearly violated some laws here. And even if they didn't, it just doesn't come out right. So a person needs to think, there's community leaders that need to think such a Levaya should, would eventually uh, all you need is the the news to come and take a few pictures, few go to take some pictures, and it goes, it blasts throughout uh, every place. It becomes viral every place, and it comes out to be very, very negative for the entire Jewish community. And this is the reason, by the way, they stopped Minyanim in Lakewood. Lakewood had Minyanim on the porches, which is safe. Each person sits in his porch on the fifth floor, on the second floor, on the third floor. And they combine porches like this, one from across the street and one from uh, two houses away and so on, which is definitely safe. But the Lakewood Poskim felt that all you need is some going to take some pictures and then it goes out everywhere. And today the, the, the social media spreads things like this like a wildfire. And it comes to it puts us in a very, very bad light. Now, what happens today is even worse than that. There are testimonies from people that have been to the hospital that saying that there were nurses that didn't want to tr uh, treat the Jewish patients the same as others. They mistreated them, and they they heard them saying that we don't want to treat them. They don't. They brought it to themselves. Now, if it's true. This is something that we, as a Jewish community, have to be concerned about because when we do such a thing, it immediately causes somebody in the hospital, and there's so many of them that are in the hospital, to be in grave danger. So we are very good in crying out anti-Semitism. We are very good to, in putting everything on the headlines in the media, Jewish media, does a great job of screaming for everything that's... That, that is done wrong to the Jewish people, but on the same time, they don't show at all that what they're doing and what the Jewish people are doing is really something that comes out as a boomerang, comes out very bad for ourselves. And we need to really be concerned with the way we do things because every little thing like that we know would be next time or next day on, on the headlines in the newspapers and in media. And that's how it was since this pandemic started, all the time you'll see in the newspapers, in local newspapers, Jews that are um, violating whether opening synagogues that were found to be operating or schools that were found in different places to be operating or other things that were found to be operating. Now, you would think that what happened Tuesday taught us a lesson, at least to that extent, that stay back. You know, this is a serious thing. But unfortunately, today, again, in, in, in Borough Park, same thing, a gathering at the Levaya. Now, Levaya is a very emotional thing, but to come out in such a way to put people in danger, and there's no question you're putting people in danger, you're putting yourself in danger, you're putting people in danger. You have no right to put others in danger, and you don't have right to put yourself in danger. Because when you're putting yourself in danger, 
you're not only putting yourself in danger. You are going afterwards to the hospital. You're using up beds, using up ventilators, using up medicine that's needed uh, and, and that is, is not is a little bit out of supply, as we all know, and you're putting workers as nurses and doctors in danger. So all these people that you're putting in danger, this, this is something that one is, doesn't have the right to say he's allowed to uh, put himself in danger because it's not you yourself. Even yourself you're not allowed, but even more so to go ahead and to put put others in danger, and when you carry something like that, you don't even know that afterwards you were infected for two weeks, normally, up to two weeks. Up to two weeks, a person doesn't know. He walks around, he walks around his family, he walks around his neighbors, he walks. He goes to the, to the groceries, he goes other places, and he gets others infected unknowingly. This is something that needs, needs to be put to the table and needs to be stopped right away. So the mayor was wrong for his screaming and for taking things tough and not uh, not letting letting it go uh, it's definitely wrong for singling out the jewish community that he shouldn't have done and there's no question about it but on the other hand to just scream at the mayor and to go around our day and two days later make the same thing in Bor park how is that how could that how does it even start? How do people? What do people think? And the the you see that the goy thinks that Jews don't care about the law. They really don't respect the law. That's how it comes out. It's already been like this. Uh, this this it's been in the air already for a long time that people feel that Jews are not uh, law abounding people. And you see this that whenever there's a jury duty, always the Jews don't want to do it. There's, there's, you'll see that there's much more percentage of Jewish people that are trying to get out of jury duty and other things as well. And whenever you feel and you see that a Jew was caught doing something wrong, some kind of crime, it's all over. So whenever you have already such a feeling out there and you know that the media is searching and looking to find that a Jew does something that is wrong, and they'll put it on the headline and they'll speak about it and it's going to be on national news and everybody speaks about it all over. So why is it that we need to feed them? It's such a, such, such a silly thing to go and feed them that that they're looking for and everybody will be speaking about it. And again, I'm saying that even if you'll hear that the community leaders and the media will speak and, and, and whether it's from Democrats or Republicans, they all condemn the mayor. But you should know that the Goy in the street does not condemn the mayor. They think that the mayor is 100% right and he should have put his foot down and the way he did it could be even was too gentle. So don't get this wrong. Now, I think that the mayor was right, but not for singling out the Jews. He should have done what he needs to do. If a person violates the law, do what he needs to do. Don't speak about the Jewish community. And right now I'm speaking to the Jewish community. I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking in a national news that I need to be public, public correct. But I'm saying again, we need to be so careful the way we act because of A, it's publicized right away. It spreads hatred. Secondly, what's wrong with people? It's real danger. There's real danger out there. It's not a joke. It's a real danger. How does such a thing even start that they make such levayot, such gathering? It's very, very strict, very strange. Chachamim tell us in Baba Kama, Daf Samech, Dever Bayir, Kanes Reglecha. Whenever there's a plague, go into your house, don't come out. But this is this is instruction of Chazal in the Gemara. This is not something that the government was putting on us, some kind of gezera, something that it, it, it's, it's, for, uh, it's, for, it's against us, it's something to make, us, to make our life hard. No, this is something that was instructed in the Gemara, and this is something that makes so much sense because we have to understand, we're talking about real danger. It's this infects people so easily. This pandemic runs and infects people 
it's as, it's so so contagious that we never experienced in our lifetime anything like that and we see that it's fatal this this virus is so fatal so if there's a law that says that one should stay home why is it that people don't understand that and you'll see that there's places in the world that took more precaution they were making uh, people they, they made they made people less mobile and they and, and they they, they forced them to stay in, in at home and close the borders. Those places stayed my, much safer. In Israel, for instance, you see that in Israel, they took, they took the right steps right away when it all started. And they closed borders. And they told people that they can't leave the house. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. When they leave the house, they have to wear a mask. We in America were behind them. And we got it worse than them. Why is that? Just because... They took steps much ahead of much ahead of us. Now, this I heard from Rav Asher Weisschlita, one of the leading poskim in Eretz Yisrael. He said that there's no difference between human beings in Eretz Yisrael and in America. Why is it that in America we got it so hard and in Eretz Yisrael not? He said that is the reason. In Eretz Yisrael, the government took the right steps right away, the right measures. And in America, they didn't. They, they, they were a little bit behind in Israel. And other places in the world that were more lax, like in Europe, they got it much, much worse because they were more lax. The borders were open over there much, much, much longer and much later they closed it than in America. So this is something that Chazal already commended us to do. It's nothing that's against us. And we need to understand that gathering in such a way would put everybody there in danger but it, it puts us in danger first us and our families and our elderly and our, f our parents and our rabbis and you see that it's it spreads and one should be very careful with that because we're talking about real danger thirdly you have to understand that when we're dealing with such thing that goes around, as I explained before, a goy does not know the difference between one Jew and another Jew. If, and you see, that's the way de Blasio spoke. He spoke wrong, he made a, a mistake, but it reflects the way even a mayor thinks. Even more so, a goy in the street that thinks that way. How do they think? They think very simple. They think that if one Jew violates the law, that means that every Jew is like that. A Jew, a goy does not know the difference. You know who said that already? Haman. Haman was told that Mordechai is a Jew. Oh, he's a Jew? All the Jewish people are the same. He didn't see a difference between... Mordechai and other Jews. If Mordechai is a Jew, that's the way Jewish people behave. And that's it. Now, it's very interesting. I was thinking to myself, why is it that you find that there are within our communities people that violate that, that very simple social gathering that became a law? Why do people violate that? And I was thinking to myself, it could be that, again, I'm not saying that normally all Jewish people comply with the law. They do as they told Mamash. And this is how almost throughout the whole spectrum, all the Jewish rabbis said that you have to close the, the shoes and you have to uh, keep home and you have to pray at home and you have to, you, the levayot should be done just with close family, with the distance uh, that's, that's, that's required, and so on and so forth. But there are those that wouldn't listen. There are so few, very few, that put everybody in a bad light. Why is it? This is something that is called frumkite. Frumkite is a concept that a person is extra religious. Why is this? Because he feels he needs to listen to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He doesn't listen to anybody else. That's it. HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He listens to the Torah. If the Torah says something, he listens to it. Somebody else says something, he would not comply with it because it contradicts the way he thinks. He has one authority over him and nobody else. Who's the authority? The Torah. That's it. Hashem is the authority. Why is this wrong? Because, first of all, the Torah itself says that you have to comply with such things. There's dinim that's called dina demalchuta dina. There's dinim that one needs to take uh, as, as 
uh, as living in 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 a, in a in a land that you have to comply with the law of the land. That's something that the Gemara says. It's brought down la in few places in Chosh and Mishpat. Secondly, we're talking about real danger. So, what happened to pikuach nefesh of yourself and your surroundings that you come in contact with? And this is something that against Chazal that said kanes raglechay, stay at home. So, a person that feels that I only have to listen to the Torah and I don't need to listen to the law, and I disrespect that. That's something that's against the Torah. That's called frumkite. Frumkite is a certain feeling that a person feels extra religious. And because of that, it, 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 it brings him to Gava. It's not, it doesn't come from real re- being religious. Rather, it's from Gava. That I'm better than others because I'm so religious. I feel so elevated. Because of that, he would uh, violate other things that he's not allowed to violate. So this is something that... I spoke in the past, and I want to press again and emphasize again these three things that bring anti-Semitism. One is jealousy, that that we unfortunately are excellent in. We cause others to be jealous of us because of so many good things that the Jewish community has. But some of the things we shouldn't show off, like wealth, like other things that we have that should be hidden. Secondly... There's some people that dishonest in business. When a goy was hurt one time from a Jew in business, he would he would not forgive at all. Chazal already tell us that a goy doesn't forgive, and if he doesn't forgive, he, he doesn't forgive not only Mr. Cohen that cheated him in the store, but rather he thinks that's it. All the Jews are dishonest, the bad, the this, the that. And thirdly, when a goy feels disrespected, if you disrespect a goy, whether you screamed at him, whether you cut the line, whether you looked at him or spoke to him in disrespect, it hurts him to the core. And once it hurts him to the core, he'll come back to bite you eventually. And this is something that we need to understand. That's what happens over here. This act of gathering is an act of disrespect to the law, disrespect to the... That's the way they see it. Again, I'm, I'm speaking from a Goy uh, point of view. The way he sees it, he looks at it throughout the world in the media on the TV, and they show such gatherings of hundreds of people where really in reality, you're not allowed to be six feet. You go to a store, you go to any supermarket, you go to any pharmacy, people stand six feet away from each other when they stand in the cashier. And all of a sudden over here, you see people gathering that understand that they disrespect the law that's going to come back to bite them because when you spread the, 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 the disease, it comes back to everybody. And besides the fact that I said before, it just uses unnecessary equipment in the hospitals and medicine and so on and so forth. So that's something that we need to remember. But very important to remember as well that the halacha called Dina de Malchuta Dina. I want to tell you about this halacha called Dina de Malchuta Dina. This is something that we found in few places in the Gemara, for instance, um, when the Gemara speaks about Dina de Malchuta Dina in various places, in Gitin Dafyud, Nedarim Kafchet, Bava Kama Kufyud Gimel, Bava Batra Nun Dalet, he brings, it, it, there's, there's few Rishonim that explain when do you apply that Halacha. For example, I'll give you an example. The Rashbam in Bava Batra Nun Dalet says that Kol HaMisim Varnoni Otu Minagot Shel Mishpatem Melachim Shregilim Lanig Bemelchutam Dinau this is the din, this is the halacha, when a goy, when authority, when a Jew in authority, in a, in, 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 in a country, in a city, whatever it is, says a certain, it decides a certain law, it becomes also halacha, dina. Dina, shekol b'nei ha-malchut mekablim alei mirzonam, chukei ha-melech u-mishpata, v'ilekach din gamur hu. Why is that? Says the Trumat Adeshen, Da'adata da'achi anukuvim dirat tachtem shemekablim alenu et olam umasam. You want to live over here? You have to do as the law says. You can't violate the law. If the law says you have to stand six feet apart and wear a mask when you are in a gathering, that's the way you have to do things. And this is the reason you live here, because mekablim alenu et olam umasam. You wanted to live here? This is the way you have to 
do things. If you don't want to live here, go live in a pl different place. But there also, you'll have to comply with whatever the law is. The Rashbam says, this is the Rashbam and the Ran in the Darim Kafret, they say, Kevan Sha'aret Shalom Melechi, Yachol Omar, Im Lot Tasu Mitzvotai, Gareshot Chem Yen Aret. The authority in the place could tell people, if you don't do things, uh, we'll take measures, we'll throw you out, we'll put you in jail, we'll give you summons. That, that, they, they have the authority to do that. Now, this halacha applies in every scenario. It's not only when there's a king, it's not only when it's, uh, it's, it's a, a Jew ruler or a Goy ruler. The way the Askilavdi says in Chelek Vav, Choshen Mishpat Kafret, this is the way he concludes the halacha is, he says, Dina de Malchuta Ne'emar ben Bemalchei Umot Olam ben Malchei Israel. It doesn't make a difference whether you live in Israel uh, or you live in Chutz Laaretz. You have this halacha of Dina de Malchuta Dina, which means whatever the law, this is the Torah, which, which means, in other words, just like you have mitzvot of the Torah, you have many mitzvot of the Torah, to eat matzah, to shake lulav, to put tefillin, you have another mitzvah called Dina de Malchut Adina. Why is it that people feel that matzah, I'll go and get myself the best matzah, round matzah, shmura, and that's the way I'll eat the whole Pesach. When you deal with Arbat Aminim, I'll get the best Arbat Aminim, I'll pay $200, $300. But when we come to the mitzvah of Dina de Malchut Adina, I completely could ignore that mitzvah without any other. That's the same halacha. And this is the oraita, by the way. You take a look in the poskim, they bring down, it's the oraita, that's majority of the poskim hold, it's the oraita. Take a look at the Avnei Miluim, and take a look at uh, other poskim as well, that bring such a halacha, that Dina de Malchut Adina is the oraita, the Tvar Avraham, the Binyan Tzion, the Chatam Sofer, and so on and so forth, that say that that halacha of Dina, the Malchut Adina is the Oraita, not like the Bet Shmuel that holds it's the Rabbanan. But the Poskim hold it's the Oraita. You have a mitzvah the Oraita over here that one must do. So says the, says the um, Yaskil Avdi, Rav Ovadia Adaya, which Chacham Ovadia agrees with La Lacha in Yechavedat. He says, Adina de Malchut Adina Neymar ben Memalchut Umot Olam ben Memalchei Israel. Secondly, he says, Dina de Malchut Adina Neymar gam be Makom She'en Melech, Rak Saru Moshe Lo Beta Hanivchar Abocharim. Which means you might think that Dina de Malchut Adina applies when there's a king, as we said before. The uh, Ran and the Rashba said that you have to comply with the king because otherwise he can throw you out. He explains and he brings proofs. He doesn't just say it. He has a whole lengthy tshuva showing that this halacha was said every place, whether there's a king or there's a minister or a mayor or a governor or beta bocharim, which means they were elected. Even if they were elected, you have to, they have the right to make the law. Thirdly, gam letzat sheneemar sheemrak bebchinat tovea ir yarif laim rashut lechokek chukim. Whoever has the right to set laws, those laws have to be met. Fourthly, he says, the whole Asadin, Ben im beachas malchut, Ben im em beachas tovea ir, enam yocholim latil davar shu neged Torah. The only thing that they don't have a right to do is to go against the Torah, which means if they tell you you have to violate the Shabbat, that is something you don't have to do. Now, in Minchat Asher, when he summarizes this halacha, he says the following. He says, "Yesh la'ayin mi shover al dina de malchut adina mad chetu ma pishu mitzad mitzvat Torah." If you violated that dina de malchut adina, what what is it that you are facing? That inach be dina mamonot. If you violate the the mammon of somebody, you took away money of somebody, or you did something that caused a loss for somebody, that's a gazelle, fine, you you stole money. But what is it over here? So he explains and says the Minchat Asher, Nira Lichora Davar al Ritzon HaTorah. It seems like he violated the will of Hashem. Ritzon HaTorah, what the Torah wants, what Hashem wants. The Bishlama be Melech Israel is Mitzvah Tzom Tassim Alecha Melech, Veshdin Moret be Malchut, Ach be Malchut Hanochrim, Ma Mitzvah Yesh Beze. 
if you don't listen to the king, a Jewish king, it says over there, Somtasim Alecha, what about a Goy king? He says with that, that you violated the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKoch צריך לומר, זה די רצון התורה שינהג האדם לפי חוקי מלכות, וכך ידע שהאמורה הגדול שמואל בכוח תורתו. So this is something that's very important for us to learn, that whenever we do something that's against the law, you're not just violating the law and nothing happens. No. This Dina de Malchuta Dina is so strict that you violated Hashem's will. And it is the Oraita. He says, what is it when in a place that you have Dina de Malchuta Dina? They were made in order to make the public better uh, life, quality of life. Or in our case, that it comes to uh, protect the community. Or the public at large. What's the halacha in that? What, what do we, how do we look at that? He says that example he is giving is he was asked in the United States, there's a law that one must put a sprinkling system in case there's a fire right away, it goes off and it, um, it extinguishes the fire. Nishalti was a little bit of a Mossad Hinochi by Arzot of Britia. Shamish Hok Shemehev, call Mossad Hinochi, Latin Marechet Automatic El Kibu Esh, Mehasha Sakanat Hayaladim. Now he says, This law is for those that are in the building. If they don't want to do it, do they have to do such a thing? He says over here that. Another example, דוגמאות נוספות לשאלה זו, כמדינות מסוימות שבשעת ההתפרצות מחלות מסוימות, החוק מחייב קבוצת סיכון להתחסן. האם חוק זה מחייב מכוח הלכה זו? There are places in the world, like here, that they ask you, and some places they, the law forces you to do חיסונים, to vaccinate. So why is it that you'll see Jewish groups that saying, you don't vaccinate, don't vaccinate? What is the הלכה? Says the... מנחת אשר, סימן קכ"א, הנה מקורות הגמרא בהלכה זו עוסקים כולם בדיני מנונות, אך זיל בתר טעמה, דלפי המבואר לעיל נראה לכאורה גם באלה אמרינן דינא דמלכותא דינא, דלא מחובת המלך לתקן תקנות להובכת הציבור, לא רק בענייני ממון, אלא בכל דבר שהוא לצורכי הציבור החיוניים. Since the king or the ruler or the governor or the, the, the whatever it is are are um, metaken, they putting up certain requirements that everybody must meet and they must comply, you also have to do as they say. This is how it comes out. כיוון שנתברר שכל יסוד הלכה זו מעצם דין המלכות והשרה הוא נראה לכאורה, דין זה מחייב גם לנהוג לפי חוקי המלכות גם בענייניהם, גם בעניינים הנ"ל. Which means, if the מלכות says a person must vaccinate, so he must vaccinate. He can't say that I'm not vaccinating and I'm going to be uh, doing whatever I feel is correct to do. You have to do as the law tells you to do. He brings also like that from the Igrot Moshe that, that was Posek, that one is not allowed to cheat 